Are you a bored console gamer? Have you always dreamt of owning that glorious RGB filled box of your dreams? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm going to teach you how to pick your PC parts in a way that even your grandma could follow. And at the end of this video, I'll give you some of the best CPU and GPU combos for different budgets. So make sure to stick around. Also, all the parts I talk about will be linked below in the description. No need to pause the video and Google everything. All right, the first two things we need to tackle are what are you going to use your PC for? Like what games you're gonna play and how much money do you have in the bank if you're just trying to play roblox or run a couple of indie games honestly go grab a pre-build like this one y'all link you'll save time money and brain cells but if you're going for the full experience high frame rates better graphics and actually understanding how your system works then stay with me you will thank yourself later now the main factor that comes into building a pc is always the budget pcs can range anywhere from six hundred dollars to four thousand dollars and beyond you've got to know your limits let's begin to start off your glorious pc building journey you're going to need some parts and this is where most console players get lost i get it you don't know which parts are good what they even do and they all have weird names like ddr5 that sounds like rejected star wars characters let's fix that the first thing you need is the motherboard think of it as a dinner plate everything plugs into it but before you go motherboard shopping you need to choose your cpu because your cpu decides what kind of motherboard you can use the cpu is the brain of the computer there are two major brands here amd and intel if you're going to be doing video editing 3d rendering or graphics design i'd recommend going with intel but if you're here for gaming then amd usually gives you a more value for your money now amd cpus are divided into three main tiers ryzen 5 ryzen 7 and ryzen 9 ryzen 5 is entry level ryzen 7 is mid tier and ryzen 9 is the i have no budget tier but here's the trick the generation and model of the cpu matters a ryzen 5 7600 is better than a ryzen 5500 higher numbers equals better performance simple now based on the generation of your cpu you'll pick your motherboard socket amd has two main sockets right now am4 and am5 if you're using a 5000 series amd cpu like the ryzen 5 5500 and the ryzen 7 5700x then you will need an am4 motherboard but if you're using something from the 7000 series like the ryzen 5 7600x and the ryzen 9 7900x then you will need an am5 motherboard also if you see x3d at the end of an amd cpu's name know that it's part of amd's 3d vcache lineup these cpus are insane for gaming basically if it ends in x3d it's cracked highly recommend i know this might sound a bit confusing but trust me it starts to make sense once you get into it now you might be asking how do i know which motherboard comes with which socket let me break it down for you for am4 motherboards look for chipsets like x370 b350 a320 all the numbers below 500 for am5 motherboards the chipsets are things like x670e x870e b650 a620 basically anything above 600 is an am5 amd motherboard chipset comes also in three tiers x series which is the high end b series which is mid-range and a series which is basically a budget the higher the number the newer the chipset so x870 is newer than x670 if you're gaming and want this speeds up between performance and price go for a b-series board but if you're the lost son of jeff bezos then go for the x-series also keep in mind the size of the motherboard most of you will go with an atx which is the standard size but if you're building a cute aesthetic mini pc then you might want to look towards a mini itx just know that mini itx is a pain to work with if you're new cables will haunt you now that we've got the cpu and motherboard sorted let's move to the gpu the star of the show this is where you have to be extra careful picking the wrong gpu can completely ruin your experience if your gpu is weaker than your cpu your system gets bottlenecked which means your cpu is doing all the work while your gpu sits around like it's on vacation just like cpus we've got two main brands here nvidia and amd oh and technically a third one intel arc but let's be honest no one's jumping for that now picking a gpu used to be a deep research mission but it's gotten a lot easier gpus are split into generations and tiers with nvidia you've got things like the rtx 3060 4060 4070 and so on the first part tells you the generation 3000 series 4000 series and the second part tells you the tier a 3090 is better than a 3060 even though they're the same generation as for amd you've got cards like the rx 7900 xcx the rx tells you it's a gaming card and the number that follows like 7900 tells you the power level 
the 7600 is entry level 7700 is mid-range and anything 7900 and above is higher end the suffix like xt or xtx just means it's a better version of the card xt is better than nothing and xtx is the beast mode version now should you go for amd or an nvidia well in general amd gives you a better price to performance you'll save money and still get great frame rates but nvidia comes with features that amd either lacks or is still playing catch up on like ai enhanced frames which is dlss better video encoders for streamers and more efficient power usage depending on your budget you'll be gaming in one of these three resolutions if you're gaming at 1080p go for something like the rtx 3060 4060 rx 6600 or an rx 7600 for 1440p i recommend the rtx 4060 ti 4070 4070 ti the rx 6700 xt and if you're gaming at 4k aka money is not a problem then you're looking at the rtx 4080 4090 5080 5090 and the rtx 7900 xtx keep in mind as time goes on what's considered low end mid tier or high end keeps shifting one day the 4090 might be a budget card tech moved really fast now let's talk ram a very important company that can actually ruin your build if you mess it up first off if you're using an am4 motherboard get a ddr4 ram if you use an am5 get a ddr5 do not mix these up for real it won't work next let's talk about speed ram is measured in megahertz the higher the speed the faster the data transfer and that means better performance in some games also don't just buy one stick get two sticks of ram so instead of 132 gigs get two 16 gigs dual channel memory is a thing and it boosts your performance ram also has something called cl latency the lower the better cl 16 is faster than cl 18 moving on to storage this one's simple just get an ssd preferably a two terabyte one if your budget allows it because modern games are massive like 500 gigs per game if you've got an aim for a motherboard just go for an m.2 nvme ssd if you're on an aim 5 go for a pcie gen 3 4 or 5 nvme all of them work next up the power supply this part gets ignored a lot but it can actually break your build if you mess it up now in my previous video i said you don't really need a 1000 psu and i got roasted in the comment look i get it future proofing is smart but for most first time builders they're not thinking five years ahead they're trying to squeeze every last frame out of their budget that said if you've got the cash go for a 1000 psu just make sure it's modular cable management is so much easier psu come with an 80 plus rating which means they're at least 80 percent power efficient but also look at the tier bronze silver gold platinum and titanium bronze is the budget pick gold is the sweet spot for most builds titanium is for enterprise level setup to know how much wattage you need go to the cooler master psu calculator links in the description add about 50 to 100 watts on top of the recommended for breathing room now the part that gives people decision paralysis the case there are so many options it's overwhelming my advice just pick the one that looks good to you and has decent airflow lastly the cpu cooler if you're using a low to mid-range cpu the stock cooler is usually enough but for how high-end PCs, you'll want to get an AIO, all-in-one water cooler. These cool your CPU better, run quieter, and they look really cool. Just make sure the size fits your case. AIOs comes in 120, 240, and 360 millimeter sizes. All right, now for the recommendations. If you're on a super tight budget, go with the Ryzen 5 5500 paired with the RX 6600. This combo can handle 1080p gaming really well. For a nice upgrade, a Ryzen 5 5600 with the RTX 4060 is a great pairing. You'll get features like DLSS and even some 1440 potential. If if you want an Intel version, the Core i5 12400F with the RTX 4060 performs similarly, but I'd recommend AMD here because the AM4 motherboard gives you the option to upgrade to the Ryzen 7 5800X3D later, one of the best gaming CPUs out there. With Intel, you don't get the same upgrade path. For 1440p, go with the Ryzen 5 7500F and an RX 7800XT if you prefer Nvidia, pair it up with an RTX 4070 instead. And for 4K, combine the Ryzen 7 7800 x3d with the 4080 or 4080 super 4090 is honestly overkill unless you're editing hollywood movies or launching rocket building your first pc can feel terrifying but it's also super fun watch a few more build videos take your time don't force things into slots they don't belong and please handle your cpu with care those pins meant easier than wet spaghetti if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and drop a comment and with that said thanks for watching i'll see you next time